time to meet the men from the ministry. We are off for another government gamble with Norma Ronald, Ronald Batterley, John Graham and the men from the ministry, Richard Murdoch and Derek Guiler. In the General Assistance Department, life is no bed of roses, as staff grapple with the nation's problems in conditions that aren't always easy. It's a blooming disgrace, Mr Lamb. I quite agree, Mildred. What is? The hot water in the girls' washroom, it's just not hot. Mm, lukewarm? It may look warm, but it's so blooming hot. <laughs> Well, it's just as bad in the men's room, Mildred. You turn on the tap first thing in the morning and the first trickle comes through around four o'clock when it's time to go home. I mean, how's a girl supposed to wash her hair? Or do her smalls? Well, I've told the permanent undersecretary about the ministry plumbing several times. And what did Sir Gregory say, sir? Well, he said there was something wrong with the system. I ought to go into it. <laughs> and it's not just the washrooms. Look at our carpet. It's got so many holes it looks like lace. <laughs> This economic crisis makes problems for all of us, you know. It certainly does. I asked Sir Gregory for a rise last week. Oh, really? What did he say? I didn't quite hear. He threw me downstairs before he actually answered. <laughs> you know, it's this decimal currency that started the trouble. Me mum says it's tampering with nature. At least with shillings and ten bob notes, you knew what it was you hadn't got. Yes, I agree, Mildred. <clears throat> and what's worse are these metric measurements. I mean, I find metres and milligrams... Most confusing. Did you ask for that calculating machine, sir? Oh, I asked, but they pointed out the ministry was economising. They sent a wire frame with coloured beads on it. <laughs> we had an awful time on that last job, Mildred. That was all metric measurements. Which job was that, sir? We were supervising plans for the minister's garage and selecting a suitable site. He's been given a new chauffeur-driven rolls, you know. Yes, we had to get rid of the old one. The cocktail cabinet didn't open quick enough. <laughs> We settled for a site at the back of the ministry. Rather an ugly one, really. Oh, and talking of ugly sites, uh, Mr Crawley popped in from the office next door. He wants a word with you. Oh, old creepy Crawley. Mm. Mm. The only man I know who talks through his nose to save wear and tear on his teeth. <laughs> Show him in, Mildred. Yes. Come in, Mr Crawley. Hello, gentlemen. I just thought I'd pop in and ask for your what's name. I'm thinking of leaving the civil service. Oh, are you really, Mr Crawley? Oh, I know I'm an asset. Sir Gregory says I'm the biggest what's-his-name in the place. <laughs> but, um, like so many civil servants, I'm discontented. I even bought the Times today to look at the job adverts. Why don't you two do the same? Couldn't afford it, Mr Crawley. I always borrow next door's paper. <laughs> no, no, I mean, why don't you think about moving on? Extend your what's-his-name. Hmm? <laughs> There's an advert here that might interest you. Uh, Look, Mr. Lamb. Oh, yes. Two executives urgently required by building construction company. Oh. Top salaries to right men. I'm afraid that our country needs us, you see. I mean, we couldn't entertain the idea of leaving the civil service. Why not, Mr. Lennox Brown? I mean, look at the hours we have to work. Oh, 11 to 4 isn't all that bad. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the question of duty and loyalty and... Luncheon vouchers. <laughs> yes, but you're always being bullied by Sir Gregory. Oh, he's not such a bad old stick. I think he's mellowing, you know. Mm, he mm. hasn't tried to jam my fingers in the lift gates for two or three days. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder if he hasn't got a sort of a soft spot for us. Aha, uh -huh, there you are. Oh, hello, Sir Softy. <laughs> Be quiet, Lennox Brown. Stop that incessant chatter. Now listen to me, you pair of incompetent bunglers. Uh, you mean us, Sir Gregory? Of course I mean you, Lamb. I gave you and Lennox Brown the simple task of supervising plans for the minister's garage, yes? Well, the work was carried out, sir. And now you'll be carried out on a stretcher, Lennox Brown, when I finish with you. You obviously don't understand metric measurements, do you? Uh, how did you guess, sir? I guessed, Lamb. Because the garage you've had constructed is four foot wide and 50 feet high. <laughs> yes, that uh, doesn't sound quite right, I admit. Uh, well, the minister's furious. A building four foot wide and 50 feet high, what could such a thing be used for? Uh, forcing rhubarb? Oh. <laughs> Just let me get away from your boat. 
Well, he really gave you a what's-his-name and no mistake. Yes, and I felt like giving him a what's-his-name. Right in his what's-his-name. <laughs> well, I don't know why we put up with that loud mouth tyrant for so long. I've had enough. Me too. Mr. Crawley, where's that advert you showed us? Here you are, Mr. Lamb. Here you are. You're not really thinking of leaving, are you, sir? On account of Sir Gregory shouting? Oh, that's just his way of saying he likes you. Well, I'm sorry, Mildred, but we've stood enough. Uh, there's a number here. Mm. We'll ring and fix an appointment for Monday morning. <laughs> Good morning, young lady. My name's Alex Brown, and this is my colleague here. See, this is Mr. Lamb. How do you do? Uh, we have an appointment with your managing director. Well, please take a seat in the reception area. Mr. Manners will see you in a moment. Uh, thank you very much. My word, this place is smarter than the ministry, isn't it? Oil paintings on the walls. Mm. All we've got on our walls are the fire regulations. <laughs> when that notice that says gas masks must be carried at all times... <laughs> You know, I'd enjoy being executive here. Marble top desk, eight telephones. Yes. Hot and cold running secretaries. <laughs> Elegant lunches in the executive dining room. <laughs> Much better than skate burger in the canteen. I wonder if they work weekends here. Oh, I shouldn't think so, too. These business types are always out on the golf course. My landlady's little nephew comes round on Sundays and I help him play with his bricks. Oh. Ah, yes. Now, you're waiting for Mr. Manners, aren't you? That's right. The other day we built a 15-storey block of flats before tea. Oh, oh I'll, uh, I'll go and see if Mr. Manners is ready for you. Ah, oh, thank you. How kind. Enter. Uh, there are two applicants here, Mr. Manners. They're the civil servants who rang last week. Oh, well, thank heaven someone answered our ad. And what are they like? Well, they're not very impressive to look at. And one of them hung his hat and umbrella on our piece of abstract sculpture. <laughs> well, as no one else has turned up, I suppose I'd better see them. And appearances may be misleading. I heard one of them say he'd put up a 15-storey block of flats before tea. Really? Oh, they must be a couple of whiz kids. Show them in, Fiona. Yes. Come this way, please, gentlemen. Uh, this is Mr. Lennox Brown and Mr. Lamb. How do you do, gentlemen? Do come in and be seated. Uh, thank you. Thank you. No, I'm looking for two executives who are really on the ball with a keen, lively intelligence. Well, I'm quite intelligent. I've done lots of jigsaws and some very tricky crossword puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for someone who's intelligent during office hours. Uh, this was during office hours. <laughs> My colleague loves to joke, Mr. Manners. We, we find humour lightens the workload, you know. Ha, 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 ha. Quiet. Now, you've had recent experience of building construction, I hear. Oh, yes. What about the matter of references? Oh, yes. We would like to know a little more about you, Mr. Manners, before we take the job. <laughs> well, I haven't actually offered you a job yet, but, well, as I haven't seen any better applicants, I'm prepared to take you both on. Oh, oh thank you. Kind of thank thing, you, yes. sir. Yes. Now, there's the question of your emoluments. Oh, my doctor says they shouldn't give me any more trouble. <laughs> Salary, too. Oh, Salary. Right. What would you say to £10,000? What? Pardon? Oh, well, I dare say I could just push it up to, shall we say, 15,000? You mean each? Oh, my word, you do drive a hard bargain. Let's say 20,000 per annum, then, and that's the limit. Until next April. 20,000 pounds? <clears throat> yes, I, I think we could manage on that. Uh, does that include luncheon vouchers? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Very droll, Mr. Lamb. You can start here as soon as the Ministry can spare you, gentlemen. Sir Gregory's in for a shock. Losing two top men. Jollibel serves him right. He never appreciated us. True. Come. Ah, oh, good morning, Sir Gregory. My junior colleague and I have something to tell you, sir. We're leaving the ministry, Sir Gregory. We are here, sir, to hand in our resignations. It's resignations? Leaving? For good? I, I, I can't believe it. Is it true? I said he'd be sorry. This is wonderful news. <laughs> wonderful. 
Uh, well, we'll put it in writing later today, sir. Oh, no, my dear fellow, put it in writing now. Uh, here's some paper, my dear chap, and please borrow my pen. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, just sign there. And you too, Lamb. Quick now, before you change your minds. No, oh, <laughs> don't sit down, Alex Brown. I'm sure you're in a hurry to go. Uh, let me open the door for you. We, we, we realise, Sir Gregory, that the Ministry will require a month's notice. Uh, normally, yes, but in your case, I'm sure we can make an exception. Uh, let's compromise, eh? Uh, good idea, sir. Uh, three weeks notice, sir. No, 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 no. Let's say uh, five minutes. <laughs> Well, thank you, Sir Gregory. Uh, no, I mustn't detain you. I realise you both want to get away quickly. I'll, I'll call you a taxi. No, better still, I'll call two taxis in case one doesn't turn up. Uh, thank uh, you, Sir Gregory. Uh, no, my dear fellow, don't waste time chatting with me. Be off and pack up your things. Oh, well, goodbye then, Sir Gregory. Yes, and don't think it hasn't been fun, because it hasn't. <laughs> They've gone. They've gone. Who says dreams don't come true? <laughs> Oh, what a beautiful morning! Oh, what a beautiful day! Ever so exciting you got this job, but I'm going to miss you both. No, we'll miss you, Mildred, but I'm going to leave you this coffee mug. I'm sorry it's cracked. Oh, never mind, sir. Whenever I see it, I'll think of you. Thank you. I've cleared out my desk, Mildred. I leave the rest for my successor. Oh, well, I dare say you'd be glad of two toffees and a jar of meat paste. <laughs> Here, how did Sir Gregory take it, sir, when you told him you were going? You'll hardly believe this, Mildred, but in a curious way, I felt he was almost pleased. Well, he'll soon change his tune. When you're actually gone, he'll regret it. He'll be sorry you mark my words. <laughs> Happy days are here again. I won't see those two twits again. Tra la 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 la. Ah, ah, there you are, Pitchy. Oh, uh, Lord Stilton, do come in, sir. I am in. Oh, yes, sir, yes. Sir. And what the devil is the matter with you, huh? Singing and dancing round your desk, well, huh? Uh, not been at the medicinal brandy again, have you? Oh, certainly not, Lord Stilton. Uh, yes. I've just come from a meeting with the PM. Yes. He's very worried about the number of civil servants who are leaving the service. Before long, we could actually be understaffed. Understaffed, sir? Understaffed. At the present rate, we'll soon be down to only two men for every one job. <laughs> Lord. And the Department of Health are a hundred below strength, and the staff they've got are always off sick. Well, it's extraordinary, sir, especially in view of this new pay rise. Uh, it takes more than money to keep staff these days. Yes. We are going to have to compete with the perks that are offered in private industry. Yes. Uh, now, have you any ideas? Uh, well, what about uh, providing free dental treatment? Uh, possibly even free haircuts? Uh. I mean, the canteen must have a spare pudding basin. <laughs> Free dental treatment, yes. Ah, yeah, and there's space downstairs for an indoor swimming pool. Excellent. <laughs> Perhaps even sauna baths for the young ladies on the staff, plus a few senior executives like myself. I think we should have a pool, sauna baths, and free dental treatment. Yes, sir. Now then, I want you to put all these ideas of mine in hand at once. Yes, sir. And another thing, Pitkin. When staff leave, I always blame the head of department. Uh, you do, sir? Most certainly I do. Two men under Sir Jason Burke resigned, so I'm having Burke transferred to archives at Ballymucky. <laughs> Ballymucky? In the Hebrides? The Outer Hebrides, yes. <laughs> so let's not hear that you've lost any staff. Uh, good day to you, Pitkin. Bye. Thunder, thank heavens I didn't tell him about Lennox Brown and Lamb. I must get them back at once. If Lord Stilton finds they've left, he'll, he'll cut off my privileges. General Assistance Department, Mildred Muffin, to whom you are in communication with. Uh, Miss Muffin, I have to contact Lennox Brown and Lamb. Oh, well, I'm having lunch with them next week. Shall I give them a message? Yeah, no, I'd better get in touch with them direct. Now, just give me their new address. Well, man, our first day in private industry. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> See, 10.45. Hmm. Dare say some secretary will arrive shortly with our livenses. Ah, oh, good morning, gentlemen. Ah, Mr. Banners, how very nice to see you sometime. I came in earlier, but you weren't here. Uh, no, we've only just arrived. Indeed. Uh, my colleague means we've only just got back. Back, sir. Uh, from looking round your building. We were in rather early, actually. Ah, oh, well, there's no need to start too early, gentlemen. 
As long as you're here by 7.30. 7.30? Oh, you think we're rather slack? Oh, well, we don't like to drive staff too hard. You can slip away any time after eight in the evening. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll have to. My landlady locks the front door at nine. <laughs> and now then, gentlemen, I have a little task for you. Oh, yes, Sir Gregory. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, Mr. Manners. Mm. The company has to erect a semi-permanent building on Clapham Common for the annual police exhibition and display. A police exhibition? The PM will be there and top brass from all over Europe. And how are we to help, Mr. Manners? Well, our firm here have a new process for putting up these structures, and I'd like you both to supervise the final plans and specifications. Oh, and uh, will the measurements be metric? Oh, yes, so there's no need to worry. If you're in any difficulty with the calculations, just treble the square root of the constant factor and divide each multiple by the radius cubed. Uh, oh, uh, yes, uh, naturally. Yes, naturally. well, I'll leave you to get on with it and, uh, no, slip-ups, hmm? Uh, what was all that about dividing the squares and taking roots from the radiator? <laughs> you deal with that, too. But mind how you go now. We don't want a building 50 foot high and four feet wide like the minister's garage. <laughs> we certainly don't. Well, isn't this nice? All together again. And what a posh restaurant. Yes. Now, what would you like for lunch, Mildred? Uh, I think I'll try the Poulet a la Ferrari. <laughs> yeah, what is it, anyway? I think it's a chicken run over by a sports car. <laughs> well, how have things been at the Ministry since we left? Oh, lots of changes, sir. They built a swimming pool down the basement. Oh? Yeah, there's also an hairdressing and beauty salon for staff who want to look pretty. And there's one for the girls as well. <laughs> and there's indoor bowling, all sorts of new futilities. Yeah. Aren't you lucky? Still, I bet you got the same at Beaver and Profit. Well, we had, Mildred, but not any longer. No, all our facilities were withdrawn last week. Oh? Because of the economic crisis. And our swimming pool's been filled in, and we've lost our sauna baths and gym. Ah. Yes, instead, an ex-army drill sergeant makes us run round the block at eight every morning. Shame. I bet you're sorry you went. Oh, no, Mildred. There's the money, you see. We're getting ten times our ministry salary. Oh, here, yeah. talking to Lolly, sir, we made a collection for you both. Oh. You know, a farewell present as a token of our steam. Ah. My word, Mildred, huh? How very touching. Yes, I'm touched as well. <laughs> well, we were going to buy something glamorous, but then I thought you'd sooner have the cash. Besides, these days there's not much you can get for 43 pence. Is <laughs> Here you are, sir. Oh, thank you, Mildred. By the way, Sir Gregory was trying to get in touch with you both. Yes, he's asked us to go to his club for a drink tonight. I wonder what he wants. Hmm. <laughs> Excuse me, Sir Gregory. Yes, Stuart. Your wife's on the phone, sir. Uh, Will you take the call? Well, how the devil did she know I was at my club? Are you sure it's my wife? What was said exactly? Well, since you ask, sir, the lady said, <clears throat> Is the lying old pig there? That's my wife. <laughs> that is my wife. Stuart, I'm expecting two gentlemen. Keep an eye open for them, will you, while I take the call? I'll use this phone, shall I? Oh, yes, certainly, sir. Hello, my dear. How nice to hear from you. Uh, 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 no, I'm afraid I'll be late tonight. I've got to persuade two of my staff to come back to the ministry. Lord Stilton's put me in a spot. Uh, but if he finds out they've left, we'll be transferred to Ballymucky. And you wouldn't like that, would you? Huh? Oh, what? watch the language, please. The operator might hear. Oh, I must go. They've just come in. Uh, goodbye, my dear. Ah, Lennox Brown. Lamb, how wonderful to see you both again. Yeah, well, take a seat, gentlemen, take a seat. Well, you wanted to see us, sir? Always a pleasure to see you, Lennox Brown, but I do have something special to say. Oh. I'd like you both to return to the ministry. Come back to the civil service. You want us to come back, sir? We can't do without you. Call me a sentimental old fool, if you like. You're a sentimental old fool. <laughs> My word, Lamb, you... You haven't lost your sense of humor, have you, my dear fellow? <laughs> it's one of the things we... we miss most. Well, we don't want to come back, Sir Gregory, and we don't like you shouting and bullying us every ten minutes. You're just a tyrant, see? 
Oh, my word, yes. Oh, surely not, my dear chap. Yes, well, you are a bullying, loud-mouthed old devil. Well, <laughs> we're none of us perfect, my dear lamb. <laughs> Have a cigar. No, no, take two or three. Come on, Mr. Mind you, we never let your ranting and roaring get us down. We certainly didn't. Every time you left the office, we called you rude names behind your back. <laughs> Names we better not repeat in public. <laughs> and we blew raspberries at you. Yes. Ha, ha, ha. My goodness, what fun. Yes. <laughs> well, we need that kind of spirit of the ministry. Now, won't you consider coming back? No. Please. No. I beg you. No. For my sake. No. And get up off your knees, man. You look even more horrible than standing up. <laughs> My colleague and I wouldn't consider returning for one second. We're getting top salaries now, you know. I've got a front lamp and a rear lamp on my bike. <laughs> well, my dear fellows, I'm not offended by our cosy little chat. I shan't take this as a final refusal. Pity. Now, believe me, the offer to return to Whitehall remains open, as does my door any time you're passing. Drop in any time, any day, and, and join me in a glass of sherry. What? Wasn't Sir Gregory strange last night? Yeah, it's quite embarrassing the way he ran along behind our taxi, waving goodbye with his hanky. <laughs> Stare, we can forget him. It's a different world here. That building of ours should be up by now. Oh, he's bound to be. The exhibition opens this afternoon. Now, you're sure you checked all the figures? Absolutely. I even used a calculating machine. Ah, well done, too. The, the men on the site seem impressed. The foreman rang to say he'd never seen plans like them. Well, Mr. Manners should be very pleased with us. Now then, you two. Oh, hello, Mr. Manners. Oh, how nice to see you, sir. I've just had a phone call from the police at Clapham Common. Ah, yes. No doubt they're amazed at their exhibition building. Amazed? They're speechless. They arrive to find they're required to give their display in a building two miles wide and three feet high. <laughs> It's these confusing metric figures, you see. You're both sacked, fired, get out! Does that mean you don't want us anymore? No. <laughs> Look here, Mr. Manners, we've made worse mistakes than this at the Ministry, and no one ever fired us there. You've made this firm a laughingstock. Can you imagine what sort of exhibition the police will put on in a building three feet high? <laughs> And now the rest of the news. The annual police display on Clapham Common started today in unusual conditions. The organisers were surprised to find the exhibition building only three feet high, but agreed to go ahead with certain amendments. <laughs> Alsatians were withdrawn from the police dog demonstration, and fleeing villains were instead brought down by Pekingese. <laughs> in the gymnastic section, the high jump became the low jump, and flying squad routines were carried out by a crawling squad. <laughs> VIP guests toured the exhibition on their hands and knees. Afterwards, the Prime Minister described the building as a triumph of British ingenuity. The reduced height showed that we could economise on building materials and still hold our heads low. <laughs> oh, switch it off, too. I can't take any more of it. Uh, well, that's the end of that job one. Thank heavens we can go back to the Ministry. Sir Gregory said our jobs are always there for us. He'll welcome us with open arms. Ah, oh, Lord Stilton, do come in, sir. Yeah, oh, you look a trifle worried. I'm very worried, Pitkin. This staff problem is getting out of hand. Oh, come, sir, since we started these perks, recruitment's increased enormously. Too enormously, that's the trouble. We are now overstaffed. But... Executives are 12 to an office. They're like battery hens. <laughs> Except none of them produces anything. <laughs> We're overstaffed? Good Lord. All thanks to these lunatic schemes of yours. Swimming pools, sauna baths. Words got round the place is some sort of holiday camp. Uh, Scrap the lot at once, do you hear? And another thing, Pitkin. See that no more office workers are taken on. We've got far too many, do you understand? Far too many. Ooh, stupid old goat. How dare he speak to me like that? Ooh, and there's no one around I can take it out of. Hooey, Sir Gregory, it's us. <laughs> Back, my dear chap. We're returning to the civil service after all. So get out the sherry bottle. I don't believe it. 
You boneheaded idle layabouts. If I never saw you again, it would be too soon. Oh, stop teasing, Sir Gregory. We've left that firm. We want to work here again. If everyone in the world applied for a job in this ministry, you'd both be last in line. Anyway, there are no jobs, no executive vacancies, none, none, none. You must find us something. Yes, uh, just give us a chance to shine, sir, and we'll shine. We have to eat, Sir Gregory. I don't agree. <laughs> However, on second thought, yes. I might find an opening for you. It's nice to have you both back at the ministry, even though it's not what you hoped for. Well, beggars can't be choosers, Mildred. We asked Sir Gregory for a chance to shine, and we've got it. Ring out the leather, too. You do that window, I'll do this. Yeah. <laughs> Put our elevenses out here on the window ledge, Mildred. Yeah, righty ho, sir, but mind how you go. Remember, you're five floors up. Uh, pass the bucket, too. Oh, I say, look, I say, look, there's Sir Gregory down there walking along the pavement. Uh, here you are, man. Uh, what? Ah, two, you idiot. Uh, look what you've done. Uh, oh, dear, I've dropped the bucket. It's going to hit Sir Gregory. Uh, Quick! Two, yes. up the ladder, uh, give we'll me a escape hand. over the roof. I don't Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Muddling through as the men from the ministry were Richard Murdoch and Derek Guiler. Also featured were Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley and John Graham. The programme was written by Edward Taylor and John Graham and produced by Edward Taylor. Mm.